So, right, it's uh, Saturday the 10th of September and it's 9.21 Greek time, which is 7.21 UK, so therefore it's 6.21 p.m. in New Zealand. This is Confederation of the United Tribes of New Zealand flag jurisdiction, native King's Walk bench. So over to you, John or Greg. It appears that John's frozen at the moment, Andrew. Oh, I guess, yes, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll just quickly present my um, itinerary for a tentative upcoming um, Pānui Hui for, uh, called by myself. If you look into the um, comments bar, you'll find a PDF for that, plus the email for any inquiries. There's, um, there's price listing tentative to those that can or cannot afford. Um, and or you'll have, for those that may be in other positions, we may need to talk about what we can do to facilitate the itinerary. So with that, just um, I'm inviting anyone from the 13 original chiefs of Kōrō Rāreka to reach out to the address provided and the pānu provided uh, um, if they wish to inquire firstly and secondly, if they wish to attend by RSVP. Um, I've given it a cutoff date of the 29th of September 2022 uh, here in New Zealand for um, people to, to inquire to that. Um, reason being, uh, nature of the beast is um, the calendar is pretty narrow. Um, once we started talking about potentially putting this um, event together, um, my team here at the Home Guard have worked uh, on providing some detail there for options based on one's personal affordability. It's open for um, suggestions. Uh, I've thrown the whole big picture together because that's how I work. It can be paired back uh, based on any suggestions anybody has in regards to try and bring it to reality. So um, the document is uh, uh, there to look towards not only for this year but ongoing years and building on the impetus thereafter. Um, I have a formal meeting with Kōrō Rārika Marae um, and its uh, committee on the 5th of October um, in regards to not only what uh, this uh, invite is about but also what's upcoming for the Marae and in particular Tamati Wakanini and his memorials that are being updated through um, pose and other things. I'm also being officially invited um, under invitation to attend the 28th of October at Mikey Hill called Orarika for the dawn, uh, dawn ceremony um, in regards to uh, the Wakaputanga and those that are involved with that. Um, so that is a formal invitation as far as I'm understanding that includes government and Crown dignitaries. Um, so I also can use that um, invitation to pass on to those that are connected to me, both be it family and or friends. Um, due to the facts that um, Mikey Hill Flagstaff, that being the um, the flag, uh, the mask from off the HMS uh, alligator um, <clears throat> is part of my heritage as far as the upkeep of the flag staff through the turn of the century. So the, through the Cook family in particular, Ned Cook. So um, if you're keen on getting involved or you've got some questions to ask in relations to that, please reach out to those numbers provided, Home Guard Global at proton.me and we'll send out a copy to you, and that is an open letter to share amongst yourselves and others. So I appreciate your time, everybody, and um, I'm happy to move on. Thank you, Andrew. You're muted, Andrew. Thank you, mate. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, John's uh, dropped out. He's just trying his new tap lock. So what I'll do is I shall pause the... Pause the meeting for right now, just while we uh, wait for John. Yeah, so... So okay. we have John back now. So the time now is uh, 9, 9.28, so that's 6.28. This meeting is being recorded. And it's Saturday the 10th, obviously, of, this, of September. 
So over to you then, John. So can you hear me all right? Because I'm on the new laptop now and I had my, I was going to read off from the computer, but I might have to read off from yours or I have to, I have to try and get the, um, get the documents back up on, on, on the other computer. Oh, I, can, I can give I you that anyway, John. So I've got that, I've got that ready anyway. So I can share the screen. So I, you can, I can follow you because I'm on the little new laptop now and I was going to read off on the laptop. Yeah, because it's too small, the, the, I can't read properly on your on 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 the documents there. Uh, it, is that the biggest you can make it? That's the biggest I can make it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I'm I'm going to have to try and I'm going to have to try and read it off off the uh, off the um the um oh I've got it here on the uh, desktop. So I might have to read off from there, and then you can follow me on on there. Okay. And uh, I'll just I'll okay. just it's better if I just read off and tell you the page I'm on, and okay. I'll just go off my my uh, my, uh, my all my notes I've got here. I've got I've got heaps of notes, and I'm going to have to try and fly through it, and get through as much as I can, and try and read out the main important parts. Which was uh, basically um, the the third the third page, but I'll just start from the top. I'll I'll go from page um, page one is our introduction to the uh, um, to the Maui and King William IV um, authority uh, of our court, and so we we go by the flag and those two memorials there of King William and 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 the Maui statue with the flag, the 1834 flag of this court and so that's the first page and it says magistrate and high court of admiralty martial law so we're applying martial law in this court on anybody who gets in the road between here and britain in our business of of uh, uh, contracts of uh, commercial contracts which is what this court is all about and bank notes the, the pound notes that we have in the ANZ bank to put on anybody that's got a, a conviction in this court and prosecuted and fined for 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 anything we we can put a figure on and we want to enforce the pound note tonight into law again and again that we have uh, the authority to use that on anybody that's a criminal and proven to be a criminal organization tied to queen victoria and Queen Elizabeth II and the Rothschild family. So that's the main theme of this court hearing and a piece of land that's under that system of Crown Corporation um, government here in New Zealand and Jacinda Ardern and now King William, King, King Charles III. He's the inheritor of all that we've put up against Queen Elizabeth and her Rothschild families. He, has to wear um, the debt of everything that's missing or, or stolen or anything we're saying against the Crown Corporation in Westminster, where our trust business is. And we need to get a new head of the trust um, because the Queen is gone. She's the head of the trust and no one else can be the head of that trust but us, the beneficiaries, to put somebody else in. I was going there to be the head of the trust to replace her while she was technically still alive legally on the document books. And she abandoned the court and went to Scotland. So uh, it's a pity that I didn't get to finish off the job. But we're doing it from this court legally and legitimately to challenge King um, Charles from this Dutch kings, the six Dutch kings, you see on the third page, I'll get to that page yet and explain it, of what our authority still is. So we're on the second page and um, with our chief there and our gold uh, dragon that's up against the red dragons of, of the wealth and everything of those royal families. We have our gold that's missing gold, the value of the missing gold that we're going to put the power note against tonight and write it up against the goal missing uh, from this court. And so that's one uh, equity that we use 
to claw back or claim back from the crown that now that um, King uh, Charles is in charge, um, he has to wear this from us, the native, in the contract, our, our king's contract against his king's contract. So there, he's, he's going to get the bill from us directly from the book, this book here. That's why I had to go like, like, uh, like uh, it took me to put this third page together to include that as a warning to them that we know what they're doing. So we're on this, we're on this page where the gold dragon is and we've got the um, uh, home guard um, sheriff's badge there with the, with the, the King William IV um, um, sheriff of Britain. That's his crown on the top of the eight points of St. Patrick's Municipalities Act crown that collects the rent off all the indigenous native lands in the world. That's that sheriff badge there of Britain and your crew there, Andy, that's, that's you. And this black one here is uh, Gregory Cook and uh, his authority here under this King William IV and those Dutch kings that are connected to King William IV the commercial contract and the mortgage liens that came onto the land at Kororareka. So that's what I'm stitching up the Kororareka title of 1834, 1832 to 1834 jurisdiction and authority to the 1823 Waikato um, title uh, to King George the, the fourth, the, the brother, the two brothers and the father King George the third of uh, um, of, of, of this jurisdiction where we get our authority from back to King William III and, um, and the Municipalities Act of that eight-point star that collect the money. He put it all together, not the Queen. The Queen and now the King Charles did not do all this work for setting up all these countries that they've conquered and, and America is doing all the conquering of the, the country still with this authority of these kings these Dutch kings. So there, that's our partner in the business of the trust where the queen has abandoned the trust. And it's only, uh, it's only uh, Queen uh, Sophia left on the trust. Uh, the queen, uh, Elizabeth sacked Prince Andrew. So he's off the trust. There's only one on that trust. And that's still our trust business that we're going after in this court to claim the whole wealth, 100% or 50% with Britain as a federal government partnership um, of this king and, and, and with King um, Charles and his lot of, of pirates on the high sea uh, operating um, their, their criminal organization with the Pope. So they're tied together with the Pope and Biden in that photo on the third. So we'll go, that's, that's the responsibility of the, um, um, the sheriffs and we'll just skip over and the King's Bench orders that he's following uh, um, behind this legacy of we're on, on page three now. Now I'll just run through come from King Solomon down through this Dutch King William III, King, King, King George IV and Ernest Augustus supposed to be the King, not Queen Victoria. They switched it, they switched it out and, and legislated King Ernest Augustus the first of Britain, UK, Hanover. They, they legislated, the Rothschilds did that, legislated him out. And so we've got him still here as legitimate in this lineup of continuity of admiralty of, of the sea and of the fleet, admiral of the fleet, all the way through to King George IV and King, King uh, uh, Ernest Augustus V, supposed to be that the one on the right hand side, he's supposed to be there um, to uh, carry on with our, our, our king line, male, male bloodline, king line, not female, male line, bloodline to us here as male paramount chiefs, male line only as indigenous natives to those kings. So that's what I'm saying. The indigenous surnames of this country to those kings, all those kings lined up there is our authority and jurisdiction with that flag of, of a federal government. We, we operating a federal government from this court. 
as as if we were going with the government as partners. So we are partners with with Charlie and his um, gang there of Rothschilds to uh, put our pound note up against their pound note. They're going to get rid of their pound note and go into digital currency, controlled digital currency with the Pope. And so we are going to keep our currency going at the two two two, two bar pound note. And they, they can't stop us from doing that with this flag authority that they don't have a king's flag. They don't have, they don't have the origins of making all the, the liens and mortgages and everything to get them on the land in the first place. So we're keeping that legacy going. We're down here, there, there's the Moai myself as, as a surrogate of all those kings up there and, and, and talking for them and king talk. This is our king talk, and now you've got a fresh king on the queen's side, and he's got nothing behind him. He's got absolutely fraud that he's inherited from his um, his bloodlines of the German side of the queen. So there, that's that's. I make that point in this court tonight that their names are up here. I've only just finished it now, and their photos in this court tonight as being liable for all the damages against the people in the world, all the native countries in the world who have been damaged by these people here that I'm identifying and naming and putting their photos in, in this court as criminal organization that the Pope said that any criminal organization is not immune from prosecution. So we have a real live court hearing tonight prosecuting these people. We find them guilty as default charge because of the Queen's fraud equals all the fraud they inherit. And they, they have to live with it and the debt that goes with it because they have not refuted any of our affidavits in this court ever. And with Jacinda Ardern down here, she's running the WEF, World Economic Forum, and with all these other people as a new lineup for the new currency coming out with the Pope on the 30th of September, which will be controlled, controlled currency, crypto, that they, they can control what you buy and what you can't buy with that currency. And with our currency, that's still original pound note. We have no, n none of that in, in our system of a king. So we're going to keep going with our king line and our chief line um, and not with the queen and um, King Charles. We're not going to entertain that lot of, of, of what I call pirates on the high sea using our, and abusing our admiralty law of these emperor kings. See, so, so there we're talking emperor talk. And there's the lineup you've got. Cindy Caro and, and Jacinda Ardern will get a book, a copy of this book, and, uh, and the police um, commissioner uh, here, um, Costa, Kevin Costa, uh, next to Cindy Caro, Kiro, Kiro. And we've got, um, um, we've got um, the uh, um, 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 area commander of Auckland, Karen, Karen Malthus, I've known her way back in the Cook Street when she was just um, a sergeant, and now she's she's in charge. I have to send a book to her and a letter. I have to write a letter next week to these people on the bottom here, except the two landowners you see there of Cook Street. They're in there, lined up with them, because they're protecting those two landowners, and they're caught up in the court with them now. I'm putting them all on the stand, and, 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 and Tim Duffy, that's, that's the policeman on the right-hand side that made absolute um, 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 bad things about me. And so he's in there with a trillion pounds on his head. All, all the people got a trillion pounds on their head. And I mean, that's what we say. And that's the bill they have to pay against their crown in Wellington and the crown in Britain now, now under, under Prince now King Charles um, 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 monarch has to pay for these people's offences. They have to pay for everything that's gone wrong in that side of the uh, trust account that's, um, that's um, 
um, um, gone rampant and made the world a worse place to be in and death. That's a debt side. We are a credit side with no debts. So there, that's that's legal money current. I'll just read this little bit out. King Charles inherits Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth II, Rothschild family banks, criminal organization, default judgment debts of Moai pound note instruments as legal money currency against you all. So there, I'm just enforcing that tonight as 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 the pound note currency equity is the people themselves, the criminals, that we put the debt on them and their assets, properties, land, the whole works, um, um, and start cashing it from, from this court hearing tonight. That's and, and, and I'm saying that to these people when they get the notice that they've been warned before uh, on Cook Street. I'll put I'll put a pound a pound note on your head if you if you interfere or tamper with our contract with those two landowners. And I won my case against them. They had no evidence, and this is too much evidence now that I've got to put the, your videos together, Andy. The 18th, I think this is the 18th video court hearing together with the books. I'll send them one book, but I'll send them the links um, to the website or with all the other court hearing books that um, I don't want to bind them all up because it'll cost a lot of money. I'll just send the books out, this this book here, out because this is the land title that's that's in question that the, the, the corporations, the private corporations are protecting these two owners here on, on, on in the photo there, James Pierce Brown and Simon Brent Roundtree, the first one holding up the paper, reading reading my notice to him to vacate the property and 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 trespass notice and 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 uh, um, a writ, a writ. And he's reading it. They both read it and I caught them on a video. I videoed them three times when I went into Cook Street to uh, tell them I'm going to take the property. So really, I can just go back to the police and tell them to stand down. Police, this is for you. Stand down and let me do my job as a surrogate king and a native land assessor and a debt collector of, of land and to foreclose and, and, and dissolve the, the title on the land. So that's what I'm doing tonight in this court. With all that authority behind what I'm saying in those photos of those kings, and we're keeping our business with them going. And that's what they would expect of us to keep their legacy going and our legacy as chiefs of the 13 chiefs up north. And I've got to pick 13 chiefs out of Waikato region. I'll pick three of the ones up north that I know the British will, will see and listen to. It has to be an original surname like Ututonga or Manukau or, 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 or Parapara, or, or um, um, Mana, Manahi, uh, Mohini, Mohini. Those old names are the ones the British will see on the documents, these documents that go to Britain into their court, magistrate court. They've got it over there. They won't have Europeans or Maori on their titles and their surnames. They won't have that at all because they came here to use the land and make money out of the land. And that's all they wanted to do, to put their instruments, their legal instruments on the land to make money out of it. So we, we're doing the same thing back to them, make money out of them for the crimes. That's, that's business. That's how, how courts work to uh, apprehend any criminal uh, activity on these native lands or any other native land in the world. So there, I'm going to skip through um, things here, Andy, because I want to read out this next bit on page four. I, I, I can read from my, my my desktop computer because it's bigger. I'll read the bits that are, make, that are, are, are important to go with those, that page three is this lot here. This court hearing today is the Native Magistrate King's Bench Court is directed to these New Zealand Crown agents listed here and the new King of England and Commonwealth King Charles III as inheritor or King Victor of Vic King Queen Victoria 
and Queen Elizabeth II, British Crown Rothschild Bank criminal organization, complicit in each other's corporate parliament and government fraud, corrupted business operating on our customary native lands of the Confederation of Chiefs commercial contract with the Dutch kings you see there in the picture, King William III, King George III, King George IV, King William IV, King Ernest Augustus I, and King in waiting, King Ernest Augustus V. Continuity of chief sovereign legal inheritance to the legitimate king's crown, legal inheritance we claim back in this court from Queen Elizabeth II crown inherited by King Charles III. Continuity of crimes of church and state that amount to Great Britain pounds, 970 million trillion trillion pounds. I put that figure there because we're going right back to 1689, all the way through that it accumulated the wealth all through those years. It wouldn't be too far off from the Swiss Indo um, calculations that I, I took my figures out of. Um, at the time, the Swiss Indo was going flat out in about 2012. Inherited um, trillion pounds valued higher our pound note would be higher, a note currency um, security of investment over each Queen Elizabeth II and King Charles defaulted contract judgment debtors um, named here throughout this affidavit book. So the book is one affidavit. The sum of everything in the book is one affidavit anywhere in the book and video and the videos accompanying this book affidavit is the, the videos are affidavits of truth what i say in this court is truth or what anybody else says in this court hearing is truth to britain that can't be un, uh, can't be rebutted yet um, so we it makes law so what i say makes the law in this court uh, against anybody else that's operating their corporate business we're a corporate business here and against that corporate business to play the game that they're playing with us. They're playing around with our lives and everything like that. It's going to get worse. They've got complete control. If we don't do this properly, we don't stick to the law of Britain and the Pope's law, put it on him too. The motu propria is what got me clear of the police and, and, and the landowners and the government and the courts in Auckland and we're going to do the same thing again, this time tell them to all stand out of the way while we take Cook Street. There, there probably shouldn't be any reason to get anybody else to go and get it. It's just to tell the police, stand around, we're going to take it this time legally, again, again, successfully. And they should stand out of the road and just walk in and, 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 and set, it's all set up with the ANZ bank with those pound notes are deposited into the into the court, uh, into the uh, bank, the NZ Bank on Queen Street. And I was going to play a little bit of the bank where the bank manager, uh, Julie Sewell, I'll, I'll play a little bit of it later, uh, of her talking to me and the pound notes and Cook Street to make them legally usable. Once I got Cook Street, they'll fire up those pound notes in the NZ Bank. They'll still be there. I, I, I pulled out of the NZ Bank but I can go straight back into the ANZ bank once we get Cook Street sorted. So we may not even have to get a private investigator or anybody. It's just between us and the police stopping us. The only thing that's stopping this case from getting Cook Street is the police because they're there for the public and for the government to, to see if there's any public complaints against anybody interfering or or, or having something to do that uh, is, is hurting or interfering with the public or people in the office or anything like that on the side. So I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out next week. I'll have, the, I'll have the answer for that next week, how I'm going to approach this time um, with or without sheriffs or, or, or private investigator, because that's going to be very expensive. And at the moment, we don't have the funding to, to do any of that. So I'll go to plan B, which is what I always had, approach the police, just the police. And that's it. They're the only ones that will stop anything from going ahead. And that 
and I can tell, show them all the evidence again in this in this um, 155 page um, document book here. There's everything in there. They need to know all the titles, all all the investigations, everything. And 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 who broke the law was the was the conveyancing lawyers, Hornbrook, Mark Hornbrook, and uh, Andrew McDonald. They they wouldn't listen to me when when I told them they can't they can't transfer the title without um, without investigating all owners or all other interests registered or unregistered interests. And they went on Te Kauwau, um, up behind Te Kauwau, uh, owner of the land of Auckland and the crown that they took that instead of the Manukau original owners to Britain. In Britain, they've got the Manukau Land Company and the titles here to the indigenous Moriori and not the bodied up Ngāti Whātua or Ōrake title. And they stole the Manukau title from Kaipara in the Awaroa Native Magistrate Court there and put Kāwharu, uh, Kāwharu, Hugh Kāwharu, as a real Kafru, he's not, he's, he's adopted, he's not even a Kafru. Their family is not true. I went, I went to South Island to Nelson and got Ross, uh, Ross um, um, Kafru um, as the real Kafru family came up. I brought them up to One Tree Hill. We stayed in Manirewa Marae and we, we signed documents there for the title. And that didn't work. The Crown wouldn't entertain it because it, does, it, uh, it doesn't stick to 1840 on their treaty settlements. And we were going back to 1823 and 1834 with the flag. Now they're playing around with the flag of 1834 and reaching into our side of the contract with the government here that's been usurping that flag. I've got a bone to pick with them, a legal bone to pick with them because they've been making all their money in New Zealand from that flag and not telling anybody um, that they're usurping our king contract. So they got that bill on their head with a pound note, right over Jacinda Ardern's head, just her head, a hundred trillion pound note tonight, on her head, on her head, just her and her crown for forging that Maori and, 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 and native title, changing the name and the whole history and the land titles and everything. It changed Cook Street, it changed the whole system here and Google and Wikipedia, all, all the professors wrote the, the wrong history to this country and they can't prove it. Only Britain can prove that it's not true. It's, it's being made up. So that's just part of the whole of this court hearing. I'm making bold statements that are true and it's for anybody to deny or refute it. They've had plenty of, they've had in anything up to 12 years to refute anything I'm saying, nothing so far, not even now, silence from anywhere, north, south, east, west. They can't entertain because they don't have the information that's in this book tonight. That's why that Moni Monaco gave it to me, a lot of the titles and everything like that to the whole country that no one, it's supposed to be private. Nobody's supposed to know any of this because of the Freemason secret and society. And so I just tell the whole world. I told the whole world as soon as Mohi told me, I thought I'll start telling everybody. That was right back to 2008 when we started Cook Street. So you can see it on these documents. You can see the dates on some of the books that I put together. It's got 2008 when we approached the, the Cook Street uh, with Jamie Peters. He went bankrupt and he, he gave me all his titles. He said, I said, I can fix it for you because I was just fresh out of real estate in Rimera. And so I did all the research on it, lived on the waterfront in Auckland, and then searched out who was who. That's the council where the title came from is fraud. The, the Auckland City Council defrauded the titles and Lynn's, um, Lynn's Land Information New Zealand forged the title. They got Don Grant, he's a surveyor general of Australia, retired, brought him out of retirement, brought him to New Zealand, and then he became the boss of Lynn's and he forged the road title of Cook Street and then put all the investors, all, all, all 13 owners into that Cook Street road, which is a public road, like highway, and then dissolved all their 300 million bucks and lost the whole bloody lot. I'm trying to 
battle for them, but they wouldn't listen to me. They just wouldn't believe what I was doing uh, to try and help them to get their money back. They found a million um, invested in, in Jamie Peters. He, he had properties in the Gulf Harbor and he bought properties in Auckland on the waterfront. And then he went too far with Cook Street and, and ran out of money, 300 million. He couldn't pay the Westpac Bank. So the Westpac Bank is in trouble too for doing the mortgage documents that David Strait, that guy that's that's been talking about me and George Watane and uh, the, the world's gold 20%, he said the banks are fraud. So I'm using his statement as saying the banks are fraud and 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 they're their, their method of, of transferring lands to the bank with, with uh, uh, bodgy um, um, land conveyancing lawyers uh, speak, legal, legally speak, um, which is fraud. And the whole thing is a fraud. The, the whole system is a fraud. I say one fraud equals all the fraud of land titles. Cook Street, the first one, it'll be the same with all the other corporations' titles right through the world because they're using New Zealand and the 1933 um, Bankruptcy Act of America was done here in Auckland on Mount Eden Hill. You go there, there's a plaque there with 1933 on it. And that's the, that's the marker of the Freemasons to America where the, they took Britain to here and they used this for a guinea pig to bounce to America to their main, main company there Washington DC from City of London um, Corporation and used New Zealand as a base model of a Maori tribe that was invented by, by Queen Victoria and, and carried on by Queen Elizabeth as her tribe. That's her tribe uh, commercially um, on, 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 on legal papers of real estate and money-making venture of corporations. So there, so that's that. We, I just have to carry on reading this red bit here, um, inherited by Charles III, continuity of crimes, church and state, that amount of 970 million trillion trillion pound valued higher in my pound note currency security of investment over each Queen Elizabeth II and King Charles defaulted contract judgment getters named here throughout this affidavit book and video accompanying this book affidavit tonight the video um, um, individuals um, um, oh sorry um, of, of my pound whichever is the highest currency the my pound will end up being the higher currency with water money of the sea all over the world and uh, gold currency of King William the fourth gold coins so he we have we're using King William the fourth legacy of gold gold coins as currency water money currency of the tidal turbines with its hydrogen power, that's water currency and, and the human collateral of criminals as the third equity against the pound note. So there are three, uh, three valuations of our, our, our uh, business, our corporate business against anybody who gets in the road of this Cook Street and Britain, Westminster and um, Michael Boyce, Admiral of the Fleet. So he's in charge of all the mortgages. That's why they bought him out of retirement to, so they can keep their legacy of mortgages going under him until they got all the money out of it and squash it all together. Uh, so um, they still need the military of the Navy's authority um, that, to make money. So they have to get their authority from somewhere to make money and wealth. Um, so high of the, the value power note uh, and court in this court enforces against you crown corporation private and public company executives and government ministers police governor general judges lawyers land developers bankers public servants bishops church ministers kings parliament governments corporate business Rothschild families 300 committee united states congress ministers president deep dark state government, Obama, Clinton, Bill Gates, Anthony Fauci, and many others we have listed and charged in 18 online Zoom court hearings to date legally. So everything we're doing is legal 
and legitimate. This is a warning to Pope Francis, Vatican City, World Economic Forum, New World Order, CDC, UN, NATO, US Congress, FBI, CIA, EU, UK, King Charles III, Camilla, and other Rothschild City of London Crown Corporation, and Pope Francis Vatican City Corporation, and President Biden Washington DC Corporation, and other corrupted Queen Elizabeth II and Pope Francis criminal organizations that the Moai Crown, King William IV Trust, the Moai Royal Bank, Moai Powerhouse Group, um, Westminster City, um, that's A Andrew um, Devine and his um, crown, um, executive there. We have to get that going at some stage when we get ours up and running. Moai Powerhouse Bank, that's up in Westminster, not London, in Westminster, but the, the company has to be registered in, in London in order to, to go up against them as, as, as creditors. Na Atua Ewa, Na Atua Ewa Altair Limited Companies have the legal right from today to legally enforce, charge, print, distribute as money currency the Maui pound note credit debit instruments on your heads as liens against your crown corporations, crown agents business, assets, property, land, foreign and local bank investments against your shared crimes we have identified, discovered, and proven to have happened over the years from Queen Victoria 1837 to today, 10th of September 2022, as unrebutted truth in this affidavit book of 255 pages now, was 253, plus pages plus on, on, on and into the future of our legacy between the six Dutch kings and Confederation of Chiefs contract business versus King Charles contract business. So we've got a king against king, a number of kings up against King Charles. We have the flag that keeps us together and it's not broken to Westminster. It's still live, but made silent. Our king is made silent. Now you've got King Charles that took the gag off the king bit that makes our king live, more so being a king in, in Westminster, that we're challenging his kingship with this, um, um, this um, Dutch king line, where they get their authority from. Where do you get your authority from, Charles, King Charles? I can tell you, you got it from our kings, and that's the problem I have with them and running this government here in New Zealand in particular under that crown system and king. The king, king has a lot to pick up and learn the history of how they got where they have now for their families, not for the common law people of the kings, that, that king, William, king Charles is gonna try and make himself look good and be for the common law people. And it's a bit late for that now because he's got all this fraud behind him to, to stacked up against him so i'm stacking all this all this debt up against him and he's not clean he's not clean as in front of god no truth there's no truth in his system of monarchy bloodline it's all up to hell and he's he has a job to try and unravel that what the queen has done and he can't say i'm clean i've got nothing to do with that no, he has got everything to carry on with their legacy of fraud and, and defrauding the whole world and, uh, and poisoning them and all the rest of the uh, genocide and war mongering and, and, and bioweapon war. All of that is stacked up against them in this court tonight. So you've got to wear all that, wear the debt of it, that we're, we're putting this all on his head tonight all that big pound notes that we've got on this book, those there, we just cashed them against him and his family, his royal family, 300 committee royal families and all the wealthy people that have lived off it and left us poor. No, it's going to change. It's, it's changed the whole thing if we get this pound note up and running tonight on Cook Street. 
so we go and King George the Fourth, King William the Fourth, laws of Westminster, we enforce on you in this court hearing tonight against your legacy, you know, King Charles, of international crimes of church and state genocide, bioweapon war, extermination of the world's population. We are bill debt charging you all for today in this court court before you, Pope Francis, this is to you, Pope Francis, and this is to you, King Charles, changes your laws on the 30th of September onwards does not affect our British New Zealand Native Magistrate King's Bench Court jurisdiction of our King William IV flag, sovereign authority and legal entity organization titles. We now state here clearly that King Charles is liable for Queen Elizabeth II criminal organization, what the Pope was saying, no one's immune now, we build debted in her monarchy makes your monarchy kingship fraud from its outset. Bad title fraud inheritance. So there, that's that's what I really wanted to say on two thousand on Monday, 9th of April, two thousand eighteen, to Saturday, tenth of September, two thousand twenty-two, for a private contract to seize sixty-one seventy-seven Cook Street. We are on page. Five now, just a little bit there, um, Cook Street and 90 Wellesley Street property, Auckland, Central City, and 17 properties owned by James Pierce Brown and Simon Brent Roundtree inventory through my own private investigations for the Moai Powerhouse Group Limited Corporate Share Company in London, UK, and Na Atua Ewa Altea Limited Corporate Company registered in Auckland, New Zealand. I wish to create a long-term business venture in New Zealand. So there, that's that bit. And we just keep going on through through this page uh, and skip through the contract assignment for search and seizure of Douglas Ricard Bell property. So he was the second owner that I warned them, Bailey's Real Estate, don't sell the property, otherwise you're going to get the pound note on your head. So Bailey's will lose their business because they broke the law and and signed the whole thing over. And I warned them, I, I, gave, them a, 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 I gave them a notice, a book, a, a bound book, and of, of the, the things that they, they, haven't, um, they haven't complied with, the land transfer, and, but they just ignored it and went ahead and the Westpac Bank, they get the pound note on their heads as well, everyone that got involved there. So it's going to stack right up against them. And we've got Troy here, the lawyer Troy, and uh, limit the amount of time by business till it becomes financial while Greg Cook is operating the Home Guard debt recovery business with the private investigator, Ailith. He's, um, he, I still have to contact him. Um, I was going to do that when I got the book all done. That'll be next week. Now I can talk to him, but I know he will He will ask for the money before he do anything. And even you, Tai Choi, the lawyer, they won't do anything until they get paid. That's why they were doing it for me for nothing. All these years, they did everything because they knew there was something in it for them. And they wanted, they wanted to be in on it. And even the bank, the ANZ Bank wanted to be in on it as well. So I'll just leave that and try and do it myself with the police and, and inform the police and talk to them and, 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 and explain again, because you've got new, new people in the police now, the old ones have gone, but I've still got the police in here that got in my road and they got a trillion pounds on their head, all of them, all of them. I said to them, I'll put a trillion pounds on 13,000 police for getting them up, for tampering with Cook Street contract. They tampered with a commercial contract. That's that's really bad in real estate if you if you tamper with somebody's contract while it's while it's in process. And they did exactly that. That's why they had no information against all the information fresh out of real estate that I had against anybody getting in the road. So there, I'm using that all against them and these videos um, uh, in just that one piece of land block. And it's taken um, um, all these years since 2008, right till now, it should have been done in 2017. 
um, if the marshals did their job well, but they, they caused a public complaint. That's all it was, a public complaint to squash the whole blooming job. Anyway, we won't worry about that. So we'll, we'll skip through this. Home Guard sheriffs represent the native hapu chiefs, um, land, kaitiaki, and confederation of chiefs. So that's um, what Greg is doing. That's page six. And we'll skip past that. We'll go on to the next page. P position is open to New Zealand, Britain, UK, fraud investigations. Graham Alec, Home Guard, New Zealand. So we can employ all the private investigators because they have to do the search on the, um, on the properties, on the inventory and portfolio of anybody in their corporate business. And they have to they have to search it out and to see what 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 its equity value is um, um, in a court case like this. So we're for real when it comes to real estate. I know what I'm doing. Uh, sovereign truth jurisdiction mean Maui law rebuttal overrides New Zealand law. What we're doing in law tonight overrides the, the government of New Zealand's jurisdiction over the court, over that court because they can't compete with what's in this book on their laws are subordinate or inferior laws of vice admiral. That's, that's, that's what they've got. Now, King, 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 um, King, um, um, what's his name? King, King Charles is going to try and use that, that admiral of the fleet to back his documents up and, and, and why they brought him out of retirement as the highest chief in the Navy. And so he's still in contract with us. He's interfering with our contract. Still, the Prince uh, uh, King Charles will be interfering with our flag contract of, of the Admiral of the fleet of the Dutch Kings all the way through if he puts him into his legacy of his documents of authority over us. It won't work in law because he's breaking the law in the courts, breaking God's law of truth, breaking um, um, laws of, of admiralty, especially the mortgage um, on, on properties and all of that from the sea. They still have to operate from the sea. So home guards, sheriffs of Auckland, private investigator and Graham Allen, um, I've, I've charged them for, for doing the job under contract in these documents, uh, if they're confident to do it, but Ailet won't do it without money up front. I've got to get a quote from him next week of how much it is, and then I'll go from there. I'll decide where the money's going to come from with the pound note or otherwise, just write it out against these people tonight. You know, Jacinda Ardern, I'll just write, write the bill up against her name as a debtor and, and give it to him. And, and, and there, and that should work in our favor because we got everything right in our court. Uh, instructions set today to the contract agreement dated the 21st of August, 2015 and 10th of September, 2022. I'm just extending the contract agreement that I had on the 25th of August and 2015 with the marshals to, to whoever we're contracting and, and naming in this document tonight on the 10th of September, uh, 2022, to do, to do the job of recovering properties. They'll have to do it in the end. It's just getting over this first one that I might have to do myself because if they're not confident to do it, I don't want, I don't want anybody making a mistake, especially of this nature and size of, 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 of something that threatens the, the crown, the New Zealand crown, if if they can't do anything about what we do, so there, I'm just I'm just not playing around with law, or playing around well with anybody. I'm just stating what's in the law. So so there, uh, land information New Zealand register forged the land transfer, and you will see the fraud transaction. We furnished you with facts and unrefuted affidavits, eighteen video affidavits and 18 document notices that will you will still lose the case under King William for Admiralty 
British flag seal. So that's a British flag that we've got from a king. So there, yeah, that, that's got authority over any king, that, just that alone. So that we'll just skip through here. I'm just, if all these in red is relevant to this court hearing tonight, so I won't read it all. I'll just skip over it and keep going because we've got to get through all these pages. And I want to, I want to, the main bit, we're going through the main bit at the moment of this case is those two uh, landowners of Cook Street in, in the fraud with those people that I put their photos there. That's it. That's, that's, the me, the, that's the meaning of this court tonight. Those people are complicit in one fraud equals the whole lot is fraud. Everything that they connect to is uh, including America and Biden and his um, 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 of domination of, of law there on the people and the, the Catholic Church, the Pope is, is, and the Church of England is causing all the mayhem in the world to get control over the people. And so we're saying, no, this is the option for people to go this way with solid um, um, certainty, the word certainty and, 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 uh, and, um, and proof of something that, that's good for you um, uh, away from all that is happening and all the misery that's coming from that side of the monarch. Auckland city lands are original British certificate land titles, not Maori land titles. That's the difference of a Maori land from Crown land. Moai is the legal true crown on his statue head of God's earth, buried deep in his earth, fixed on Easter Island, belongs to my Wano royal Taishin family, not people who are from Chile who stole my land and country. We're there, we want returned to us through the British military um, um, admiralty courts of law as another claim. So we, 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 if everything goes well, we just pay, I'll just write out 20 billion or so, just a first payment to the British military to go and chase after all the crooks in the world. So that's, that's on the card. That comes straight after Cook Street, the, the military. The military is all over the world, just right out the pound note, up, up against the lost gold and the stolen wealth and everything else in that trust that we stay, uh, we, we say we, we are still the beneficiaries and trustees of. I'm saying we're, we're trustees of everything that uh, is in this court. So the court takes ownership of the trust and, and everything in our contract because there's no queen there as the head of the trust. So we assume to take over that trust as our business. That's our business as natives of New Zealand. Um, so there we can skip through all that. I'm just uh, putting a home guard in there and um, um, things about sheriffs, personal asset checks. We, we check all the, all the, the personal stuff of those two landowners and we are on page 11 12 now i'll just keep screaming through here and i'll come across anything that's uh, that i can talk about um, doug ricard bell chris finlayson robert Muir, robert and Dale, andrew mcdonald and mark hornbrock don donald grant um, david bailey john bailey of uh, bailey's real estate jamie peters robert platt and two other two new illegal landowners, Simon Roundtree and James Brown for Cook Street property seizure with Jerry Matapurai. That was at that time, we're bringing that back up now to hook up from that past back now. We haven't got any limitation X on our head. We, we, we can pull these out any time that we want to, to bring it into the court and to carry on from where we left off. Uh, in the first instance, search and seizure property fraud and land transfer offence claim between my Crown, um, Hawaii Kaatiwano creditor, I'm just going as creditor, private prosecutor as judge versus Douglas Ricard Bell, default contract. So they had a default contract before these two landowners took over. 
there was a default contract in place and it still runs now. So there, we've gone through that. We've got um, Tournament Parking Limited. Those are the old um, uh, titles they had. And now a list of all the new properties, 17 properties of, of, uh, of those two are listed here. Land information, uh, Tuesday 3rd, 30th of August, 2022, title summary. I got a new set of um, title uh, to check what's, what's changed on the titles. And so we'll carry on. I've got my real estate ticket to know what I'm doing. And uh, here, Home Guards uh, signed this document when they've got the book and they've sufficiently read it. If we go into contract to seize the property, if I can't get it myself in the first place, uh, because I can do it with the police um, and as, as a first um, first approach uh, before contracting anybody. I might not have to pay anything to do it this way and um, any trouble that might ensure um, um, if anything goes wrong. I don't want anything to go wrong because there's too much work being put into this. If it's got a human mistake, one human makes a mistake and the lot is gone. So I don't want to take the risk of anybody who's not competent in land, um, real estate, and banks, mortgages, and also land um, um, investigation of the original titles to the land. A lot of things wrapped up in this court tonight. So there, we've got the counts here in that, um, and we're on page, I'll try and get through quicker now, 18. Uh, our UN unrebutted video affidavit hearing documents of true statements of fact, cited evidence affidavit. There's plenty of reading to go through here. I won't say everything. And we'll skip through there. Um, oh, this is what you gave me, Andy. This, this is the meaning of affidavit. I've got your name there. Andrew Devine in Greece as our New Zealand, Britain, UK partnership world 250 country native magistrate king's bench court zoom host so you gave me this i asked you what is the meaning of affidavit so here it is a long meaning of affidavit and it simply means it's the truth your word and if anybody doesn't refute your word it becomes the law and so it's explaining it well here all the way through for you to read the viewer and the watcher of these court hearings that we take our authority from the meaning, the real meaning of a British citizen, British man, Nandy Divine. He knows English law, understands English very well to know what it means. And I put it in the red, what it means. Um, exert that does not conflict with commercial or common law is valid to the extent that it does not come conflict with commercial law, that's of kings that put it together. Check and make, this is the end of the game, it's over for the public servant agent who damaged you. <clears throat> Workman is worthy of his hire, all are equal under the law. That's what we say in this court tonight. We're all the same. We get a cut out of everything we recover, everybody, not just a few people, it's going to go right through 250 countries. Whatever we cover from Cook Street, it gets dished out. And I've got that plan all sorted out. Um, and equally, um, people who join in on this side of the ledger. In commerce, truth is sovereign. Uh, in commerce, truth is sovereign. Truth is expressed in the form of an affidavit. So of, of these are in capitals. An unrebutted affidavit stands as the truth in commerce. An unrebutted affidavit becomes the judgment in commerce. In commerce, for any matter to be resolved, it must be expressed. So we've had enough expression of it. An affidavit which is unrebutted point for point by another affidavit as truth in commerce. So nobody put our affidavit up against all these affidavits. Now they've got 18 more affidavits stacked on top of truckloads and trailer loads of affidavits. 
to try and get over all that lot and this lot with a video makes it worse for them because they have to come on a video to make their statement and it won't wear because they have to get their authority from somewhere. Sacrifice is the measure of credibility, no willingness to sacrifice, no liability, responsibility, authority, or measure or co of conviction. <coughs> Tenth maxim in commercial law is a lien or claim can be satisfied only through rebuttal by affidavit point for point resolution by jury or payment. So they have to pay up because they haven't seen nothing. They stayed in silence and silence is acquiescence to, uh, to being guilty and have to pay. They have to pay up. Just under our dirt, you have to pay up and lose everything that you own, your property, your land, your everything. You're going you're gonna to lose it because you, you've been doing bad things to the people, jabbing them and all this sort of coercing them. To, to do something they didn't want in the first place. So you're going to get this bill on your head tonight, a hundred trillion pound note, and we can draw on it straight away from this court and the jury. And the jury is the, the people that we have here listening and the world watching. That's the jury. The whole world is the jury. And we've got Kevin and Ned here. He's got his court hearings in Canada or Canada, and he's got his uh, uh, legacy of um, the international courts of justice of of, in, of indigenous people. And so we're following along with where he's going, but he's stepping into their court in The Hague and have difficulty in trying to get it across and even get the money out of them. It's gonna be difficult if you haven't got something like this lot to, to get to claw back the land, the wealth, the money, the trust, the everything back. And so he's got that problem that we can help out one day when we get this off the ground. So there, that's him doing some good work. So here's these two, Tim Duffy on the left, the policeman, and these two, that landowner there, that's James Pierce Brown there, and Debbie, the woman there, she's in charge of the office, and Simon Brent Browntree at the bottom there um, in the photo. And that's page 21. So we'll, and you'll we'll see Douglas Ricard Bell in the photo there as wanted. And so we've got a trillion pound on his head. And, and uh, Aaron Pascoe, this is the guy that did the two hoy raids, and he stopped me from doing my contract. So he gets a trillion pounds on his head. That's another policeman. They, they ran away, Philip Taylor and all those other people ran away. They all get a trillion pounds on their head, Andy. It's just the figure going right through the whole lot of them and the banks, how, how they make all that money and, and, and out of people, that's, this is the way to do it and to offset all their, their skullduggery um, 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 business, corporate business. So here's King William with his signature and um, uh, what was I going to say? And the Admiralty, he's, that's his Admiralty crown and anchor authority that we use. And his coat of arms, the, the King of Britain, UK, Hanover, there on the right that I wear on my shirt. I still got my shirt with all my things all over it, all his um, emblems over it. And so uh, that'll come out one day when I when I finally get things off the ground. Um, so so there, that's where we draw our authority from. I was going to say something else about it, but we've got all these seals on the next page all over the place. Um, to Britain, and uh, here's 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 the, we're on page we're on page 23, and here's here's the document that the forged document with the affidavit beside it where they changed the title illegally. So I used this as evidence. It should have a schedule number on it somewhere, but it'll be on the book itself. So there, this is the crucial evidence of Ford's Road, the road title, lawyers and and Don Grant of New Lynn's New Zealand Land Information New Zealand, created from the British Crown Road title into the New South Wales Australian Lynn's title illegally to allow Douglas Ricard Bell to commit a fraud land transaction 
violated the My Hapu King William IV 1835 Constitution and Admiralty jurisdiction, breached our UK British Constitution 1852 Act by sharing the sovereignty of New Zealand Constitution 86 and Australia 86 Constitution and jurisdiction without consent of Westminster Parliament for my Crown Cook Street landlord in force King William for court martial warrant against any offender who copy use uh, my title documents. So there, that's that's another affidavit against that fraud land title. And that's that's the key there, right there, that receipt there from the council that I got that shows where the discrepancy in that title in real estate terms of investigating titles. That's it, that's it wrapped up there. So we'll carry on, we're on page 24. Mark, we'll, we'll, we'll try and skip through this. Um, so we've got the two um, sheriff's uh, badges together. That's John Key. So we're going to skip past all of this um, and, and we're going to tear on through. I'll, I'll skip a few pages now, um, Andy. And um, um, we're, we're on page, we're on page 20. Six. Now you see Natalie Flower Do Brown in the picture there, and Judge Mackey there beside her on the left. That's the judge that I sent these documents to, but I had no money to pay him because it was going to cost a lot of money for him to put it through the court. But he's on his register um, um, of the documents you'll see later. So it's it's there if I want to go to, to Westminster, um, to uh, London into his court or be somebody else there to take over now against this woman that arrested me. Here's the woman that arrested me and she forged her own arrest warrant that was supposed to come from a lawyer. She was doing a police authority and not a lawyer authority. She illegally made, made her documents, all her court documents, she made up herself and they spirited her off to the Solomon Islands to get away from me, from taking her into court. So, so she's the instigator of the court case that landed me in prison unlawfully, illegally. And so all those prison, all those people get the trillion pounds on their head and she gets up the, the trillion pounds on her head tonight in this court. So there, it's just stacking up against them to rip, rip back all that wealth that those thugs have pinched off everybody in the world. So this is the way, this is the way to do it. We'll carry on. He's Aaron Pascoe, another policeman that got in my road. He stopped my contract and said, no, you, you, you stop doing that. So he tampered with my information. That's him there, wanted. And there's the people I was, I was writing, Hammond, that, that guy next to that um, Horton, um, the British military. I was writing, and and Sam Ballas, the Navy. I was writing letters to them. I've got all those letters that I was writing to them about this police in New Zealand acting illegally, breaking the law. They broke all the laws. That's why they had to drop everything because that that was wrong. That was really wrong. So that's another affidavit against that one policeman. He libeled the whole police force, thirteen thousand of them at that time. So I put a trillion pounds on 13,000 police because I warned them. I said, you stop me, I'll put it on all your heads, the whole lot of you. And I'm saying that again in this video tonight. I mean what I say. So we're on page 26, we're going slow. Um, I have to skip, skip through it. Now we'll go past this. That's just some more information on the land block. Go past all that. Uh, we can go past all this. That's more information on the land. All that in red has 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 more information and all the titles here on page uh, thirty one. All the titles here listed and, and for that land block. And I've updated all those now. Um, city works. City works. This, this is all to do with that and. Um, I'll keep rolling, Andy. Keep rolling through. In REM, arrest the property in REM. 
So all Admiralty stuff in here again and keep going. And we accepted their silence and non-performance of this defaulted contract. They lose the land as a consequence. The matter will be at a close 12 noon on the date of 12th of March, 2015, 1 bar 6170 Cook Street, four title lands shall be transferred to the My Account King William Ford Trust Private Company, Devonport in England. That's where the, we're on page 35, Andy. Um, in England, uh, Devonport, where King William the Fourth's memorials are in Plymouth. Um, that was the biggest Navy at the time. He was running that. Uh, we, um, so the titles, so that was the date. It, all the interest is going on top of it, of default from, from that date where, where we're supposed to get it. And I'm charging them interest on all from that date right till now for, for, for not adhering to give up the property and because of their fraud, the whole lot of them, fraud. And transferred, um, I've said that, King of Hanover, yeah. So um, we've got these bits here with Moai Crown, just go down a little bit from there, Andy, Moai Crown, writ of Sertiarari. So this this comes in all, all the, on that date, 25th of November, 2019. I went through this with Lady Crown and, and Kawanata Crown, or Gavin Mar Marisic, at the time we were putting my, my own information into them going into the government to um, take take um, take all all the land back, but it didn't work. So I pulled it all out again and stuck it here. And that because I spoke to Lady Crown yesterday uh, with Andrew, and so they're going the Maori way. That that's that they're going to stay in that court system with King Charles now. And so they have to stay, they can't come into the King's Bench Court in this side, King versus King, in this King's Court. So she has to go and contest in that King's Court and Queen Victoria and all her documents will change now into that King. So I don't know if they'll have a problem switching over from one to the other. It's going to be one hell of a mess. We've got a clean run, no mess in this straight line, straight straight line, right from 1689, King William III, right till now, no glitches, just straight through. <clears throat> my, my Crown counts Bill as liable admiralty and complaints and com claims against you singly, Bill charged debtors. So this is a lot of information going into these, these parts you see with the line there and my Crown writ. It's a writ. These are writs, they're lethal instruments that we're putting this on your head, Jacinda, and, and, and uh, Pope Francis and, um, and uh, Liz Truss, the new Prime Minister of Britain, and Joe Biden. This is on your head, this writ and decree here on this book here. It's on your head. It's on your head today. And we're enforcing all this documents in the pound note on your head. Emergency Bank Act, March 9th, 1933, apply the pound note levy debt of banking money instrument. So we're applying this pound note to all this debt that you've incurred, um, you people with the photos that I've put there on trial tonight. So we've found you guilty as charged and convicted and, um, and prosecuted. So we go down a bit further, my crown writ, uh, writ here, uh, date November um, 25th, 2019. Contract, rescind your contract and ask for your deposit back on the grounds that the contract violates the truth in lending under Title 15, Section 2261. We're going to ask for the deposit back. We do, do not call it promissory note, we call it a deposit. That's on Cook Street. Those, that's, these are directed to those two landowners on Cook Street. Writ, the writ on that property to take it because they're breaking the law. My, and, and I'll carry on on page 38. Uh, Crown writ, writ, all writs. British UK governments have no subject matter of jurisdiction. Um, John Horney, 
one or surrogate king within four king of England uses habeas corpus writ of ma mandamus for administrative ruling and king's bench warrant orders and writ of prohibition when the admiralty impedes John, you've muted yourself, John. John, the cat, I think the cat's just muted you. He's dying on a beat. You're back on, you're back on, on the beat. You're back on now. Yeah, okay. Now, then you was well, on the well, well, just, I'm, I'm, I'm still on page 38. I'll, 38, yeah. I'll just read this. Hey? Lord Crown, Lord High Admiral Emperor John. That's what he was about to say. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we'll mandate. go back. The uh, writ of habeas corpus. Writ yeah. Of mandate, yeah. Well, yeah. So, yeah. so my Crown, Lord High Admiral Emperor John Kaki One or Surrogate King William the Fourth. I'm going as the Lord High Ad Ad Admiral, that Joe Biden, President of America. I'm using the same title here with authority of those kings six kings or seven with, with King Solomon and, and King uh, William the fourth King of England uses his habeas corpus writ of mandamus for administrative, administrative ruling of these King's bench warrant orders and writ of prohibition when the Admiralty impinges upon the common law, international bills of exchange, uncitral United Nations Commission on International Trade Law removed the ex expatriation from New Zealand Crown Attorney General Chris Ferguson, fraudster named in the levy lien debtors, criminal proceedings, salvage property, arrest, asset seizures, all sole corporations, properties, prize possessions of war, and propriety properties ownership seized by the Maya Crown. Court sheriffs, New Zealand, UK, British military, and Scotland Yard surrendered under the King of England, referred to reverts back to the Emperor Surrogate King William IV, Lord High Admiral King's Bench, Royal Revenue Corporation, use of treaties, expatriation of your citizenship. 77. I am writing to you today to tell you that I'm seizing. 1 by 61, 77 Cook Street land block on Thursday, the 12th March 2015, after midday, as a result of complaints that I sent about 1 by 61 Cook Street forward to the High Court of Admiralty in London. And again, we're enforcing tonight, extending that, that order there to today, the 10th of September 2022. So there we can carry on going, um, carry on through some more. So these are very important documents right here in these lineup of the writs uh, of execution, property control, and arrest warrants that we're putting on these people and arresting them just in the dern. You have an arrest warrant on your head tonight for all the criminal activity that you've been doing and all this time you've been a, a prime minister and have led the people down a, a, a bad path um, and move, um, okay we'll go past all that keep going I think I'll just keep screaming through rich rich It's a search and seizure. I'm on, <clears throat> on, We're on page 42. Ooh, I'm going to have to try and shift it along a bit. Um, so those writs are, are singled out all the way through. So I'll skip past them. And they're there to read because they are included in the court tonight. Everything that I don't say is included in this court hearing tonight because it's a lot to read and absorb as critical um, on allegations that I make against people. Um, and, and, and they they needed to say something uh, to us in this court hearing 
um, on, on the next court hearing next Saturday have to reply on this video court hearing. If their names are, are, are shared, then they have a whole week to respond and come on and say something. Because if they don't, it just comes law next Saturday. All this will be law, and we're making it law tonight anyway, but it gives them a chance to do something about it. And I don't expect them to do anything about it. Um, so we're going past, um, hang on, I just have to, my thing is frozen a little bit. Oh no, it's away, it's away. Um, <clears throat> I'll just read this bit here, a little bit on page um, 45 uh, about the pound note. My New Zealand, my Crown State Government has compromised New Zealand citizens operating business with no legal queen of England, sovereign authority flag seal of Admiralty law matching King George IV land title deeds. The Benevolent Society Trust sealed. That's one we, we're going to deal with because I had that all sorted out with, the, with that trust. The Maui Native Magistrate Court Britain UK, New Zealand, seal. The currency is the King Tafio pound note and King William IV gold coin seal. So we're making this statement tonight of the currency we are using in the pound note and the gold coins and the water money currency. The sovereign, the water money currency hasn't happened yet. So that's in the future to take title over the sea, the water, the air, the land, and everything in our trade uh, patents. We have our own patents to go and step anywhere in the sea with their flag and put any construction up with tidal turbines under contract. So we are a contract company, um, commercial contract company. The Sovereign Admiralty Navy flag is the Native Paramount Chiefs Confederation Tribes flag of the world in 250 countries sealed in this court tonight with all those seals all around them stacked up. Um, writ of Certiorari, Certiorari um, date November 25th, writ 2019, writ of execution, control, position, property, arrest, and demolition order, we apply it tonight. <clears throat> so we don't have to do any more. All that's in their trustees and everything going on with of execution. <coughs> so those, um, are here we are on page, I'll just make, make 46, I'll have to get on a bit here. Um, that's some more against um, the landowners, some more things, um, some more uh, statements of claim against them. So I'll skip through all the next lot. Okay, it's, we, we're going to skip past 51. I think we're, we're going to dance through the, the next lot. These are just the books that are signed by the chiefs at Waitangi and some written statements in my own handwriting of what happened on Cook Street. So there, it was at a, at a time where I was running out of time to go to the police and just wrote it up instead of typing it up. So those count, everything I write counts. So we're skipping through now, the, all this title stuff, all these titles and everything are in bound up books of the magistrate that I took to, to England, to Westminster um, in my bag. Now we get to page 69, the property law section. This is where they broke the law the conveyance lawyers, the married land compliance issues, page, page, page 69. This is where the land information and the transfer broke the law. This letter is to advise you of issues that have arisen in connection with the re re registration of title transaction affecting Maori freehold land and measure Measures Lynn's now needs to take to ensure compliance with Tituria Fenua Maori Act 1993 audit. 
Recently, the Register General of Land commissioned an audit of lawyers making e-dealings, that's online, certifications in relation to Maori freehold land, including Cook Street, because that was come out of Maori, Maori title land. A compliance review of transaction lodged over a 16-month period has identified that incorrect certifications have been provided in 25 out of 45 cases where Maori land court confirmation was required. These results are disappointing and indicate that further steps are needed to ensure lawyers meet their obligations under Te Ture Whenua Maori Act 1993 when certifying land title transactions for registration. Lynn's and the New Zealand Law Society provide property law section take these matters very seriously and we'll be working together to ensure that further guidance and education is provided in the legal profession on compliance requirements for Maori land. Those are all Maori lands that, that are all over the country and including the ones in Auckland where the, the land came out of Maori land. Also to address these issues in the interim lens, we'll put in place additional measures that will enable e-dealing, that's online, transactions affecting potential Maori freehold land to be quality assured for compliance by LINS personal, personnel prior to registration. Step down to lodge. This is where I, I put in, in a, a caveat on the land and that it's, it's called step, to, step down to lodge for the for the time being, we will implement a new business rule within land online transfers and mortgages, which are currently auto registration will step down to large if the land involved is flagged with potential Maori freehold land status. This effectively means that all instruments affecting Maori land will be subject to ver further review by Lynn to verify that the requirements of Te Tira Whenua Māori Land Act 1993 have been complied with. Um, upon receipt of dealing, an investigation will be carried out by Lynn's Processing Centre officer to establish whether or not the land is freehold Māori land, and if so, whether the appropriate Māori land court confirmation has been obtained. If necessary, a requisition will be issued to the law firm to produce appropriate evidence of Maine land court confirmation. They ignored all of that. They ignored their original Maine land titles on their property and squashed it out. They, they wrote it off. So there, that's, I wanted to say that because of the fraud. And this next page just says some more. Um, when the lawyer has certified that the, they have complied with the requirements, they didn't comply. Of Te Tiria Act 1903, uh, they will need to lodge an image of the Maryland Court confirmation with the instrument. They didn't do that. They didn't provide the instrument for me and Mohi Manaka to say where they got the land from, the Maori land and the chief. They got the wrong chief, see? So everything was Maori in Queen Victoria, the land here in New Zealand. The British titles were separate. And so we're only dealing with the Maori chiefs that the government of New Zealand picked their own chiefs to sell the lands illegally. And I'll just underline these bits. Where there is no such confirmation, the lens property rights and analysis if PRAs will ask lawyers to produce the certification. They had none. They just had none to produce. They couldn't produce it. That's what I'm saying here. Why we take that land back? Because they couldn't produce the original landowners, the Maori landowners. See? They, 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 I, I tried to get it out of them. I was fresh in real estate and I knew what was wrong with the title. 
Um, this copy can be fixed, emailed, or photographed, photocopied, and posted to LINS. LINS will require this evidence before the transaction is registered. They did not comply with registering the transfer of the land and just went ahead without any information to provide. There, that's the end of Cook Street. That's, that's, that shit wrapped up there in this document and signed by Robert Muir. So I have him a trillion pounds on his head for getting it wrong <coughs> in all the documents in these books. So there, one title, they're all the same. And there's Douglas Ricard Bell, this guy here. He come from Australia. He was a, he was a land um, property developer. And he, they were sharing the same lawyer as the new owners. I found that out, um, um, MacDonald, Andrew MacDonald and Mark Hornerbrock. This guy, it was his lawyer and, and, and Jamie Peters' lawyer and the new owner's lawyers to transfer the title because it was easier to do, use one lawyer and it conflicted the whole title. It was having the same lawyer representing both um, entities, both, both uh, corporations. And three corporation companies, one bankrupted, and this guy came in and bought the property for 38 million. And the Chinese were, were at the time were prepared to pay 80 million for that Cook Street property and got turned down because the council, the Auckland City Council said, no, you're not going to buy it to foreign owners. We're not going to sell it because it's got a problem. And so this guy here, he bought it for 38 million and sold it for 38 million. He wanted to get out of it. He didn't want to get caught up with me. And so the, 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 the owners now can't sell it because the council stopped them from selling it because it's got a problem in it. See, so I'm telling you the truth about land title transfers. Watch what you deal with lawyers because they'll screw you if you don't know what, what, how they work their little magic on transferring land. Now here's the block here on 61 Cook Street on page 72. There, um, um, all that yellow bit, all that yellow bit is, is the 98 Wellesley Street and 61 by 61, 77 Cook Street. That's, that's worth about 7 billion now for that and all the other properties. To develop this land block here, it was 2, two billion at the time. And now it's about five billion just to develop and put the high rise building up. Now I said to them, don't put the building up because you're going to lose it. I'll, I'll take it off you. So, so now no building, but take the thing just like it is there and put the big building up that those investors lost their money in. See? So I'm doing a good favor for those people who lost the property. And here's the titles here the private res registration that I put in. And on page, page, this was the best way to do it, Andy, for me to read it, 70, 172. So there's the titles there and all the information here following. Oh, oh shucks, hang on, I might have jumped. I might have jumped ahead of myself. What page are you on, Andy? 72, yeah. Oh, no, my page is flipped over. Hang on, I'll just, I'll, we, we're going to skip through all this lot soon, hang on. I'll just go back a bit, 72. Yeah, so we'll roll past this because that's all real estate. You don't need to know that. But on page 80, page 80 is the road title, that little bit there. That, that's, that's the road that they crooked the road, 72. Oh, hang on, 80, page, page 80. We're on page 80 now. So you, yeah, that little bit there, that, that's the road title that the, that the owner, Douglas Ricard Bell, put all the investors into that little title of a crown, crown title of roads and highways and discharged all, their, all their, their, their titles that they had a share in the titles of their block and they lost it all in their little road. So, so there, I know, I, know how, I know how it works. So we can keep rolling on. We'll, we'll skip through all this lot now. We, we're going to go past all these titles, which doesn't concern you too much. And the old ones have been updated 
um, to the new ones I've put in um, and, and added um, and, and to update what's been added to the properties, the quotable value New Zealand. And that, that puts the valuation on the property if I want to find the real valuation. So I just pay for the valuation of the property to find how much it's worth. <clears throat> um, so we're still rolling, Andy. I'm still, I'm still heading on through. We only not even got the halfway yet, but we'll get there. A lot of it I can skip over. Um, I'll just roll it, roll it. I, I don't want to skip too far, far ahead of myself. So I'll just keep, keep rolling. I'm, I'm on page 111 now, 112. So I'm still screaming ahead. Um, 112. Um, we'll go past all of these because that's for the court and um, and real estate people to understand what I'm doing. I'm just I'm just making I'm making um, well just stop on page 120 122 page 122. I'll just read out what I've written. The latest inventory portfolio of properties for the Confederation of Chiefs and my Crown Native Magistrate King's Bench Court shall seize from 2015 documents we bring back into the court of sovereign people of New Zealand to take direct action tonight against the corrupted Ford New Zealand government and Lynn's land title transfer fraud system and bank fraud mortgage on our customary native lands. We have previous unrebutted Manukau and King George IV transfer of British title to the Crown in 1823 and again for Manukau land transfer to Queen Victoria Crown of Uatawa Pukekohe land transfer on 11th of March 1862 that formed the Native Land Act 1862 for the whole country and Auckland title that I have researched from 2008 start of Cook Street investigations with Paramount Chief Mohi Kemati Manakao IV. Now we have 18 Zoom video affidavits of weekly court hearings and 18 affidavit books, bound books of evidence to show to now complete, complete what we set out to seize the property with this writ of execution property seizure arrest warrant and decree rule law jurisdiction and confederation of chiefs 1834 contract flag jurisdiction and legal authority so there's all the properties there there's about seven billion bucks worth or eight or nine billion bucks worth sitting right there of those two young owners and they're protected by their their um, business organization called Intuition New Zealand Limited on Mahuhu Street, 42 Mahuhu Street, by the Victor Arena downtown on the waterfront where I, was, where I was living there, investigating all their titles. It took me a long time to go through all their titles of those companies and find who's who and put them in these bound up books. So I've got all of them lined up. I've got them all lined up to drop the pound note on their heads because it's all one fraud equals all fraud. Prove one, the rest are the same. So we're going to skip past all these um, titles. I can understand all of that lot and uh, not hard to sort out which is what. And then we go past all this, we go past 151. We go past the police commissioner at the time and uh, uh, connections with Britain at the time with the British um, um, government. And Kingi Tauro on page 132, the chief there, bes beside the, 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 the carving there. So he signed all these documents for me. He, 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 he just signed them because he wanted the land back at Waitangi. He wanted his land back and the Waitangi Marae land, he wanted all that back. That's why he came over into the Marae when we had a native court hearing there on video. And uh, But um, I didn't get much attention from the, the Taumata, um, only Kingi and uh, Hohepa Epiha and um, Willie Pater 
um, that came there and a few other people had came into the uh, court hearing with us. So we're going to skip past. Um, see, uh, here on page, hang on, Andy, on page, hold it on page 136. Go to page 136. Now, the Australian government is usurping the New Zealand 1986 constitution. They used the constitution in Australia. I tried to stop them doing it. In the 1993 Native Land Act, they're using our Native Land Act and won't tell me where they got it from. So that, that's, that's when they were setting up Canberra and John Key put out our trust money in, in, in the New Zealand company in, on the stock market, he changed it into Canberra and into Washington, D.C. That's where our trust is now. Everybody's, everybody's um, trust account is, is in Washington, D.C., not New York now. So this is tied up in these Australian titles. I, I had them up at the time um, uh, of using our Native Land Act on their titles in Australia. So they borrowed all our laws over there. That's what that is. And this Native Land Act 1993, see? Te Ture Whenua Act in New Zealand. They usurped the whole lot. Our government gave Australia the use of our Native Land Act over there for Australia and their titles. So I'm going to go them for that too. Australia using our authority on our land for their lands on their Native people and screwed the Native people over there with our laws over here. So there, I want to point that out, make that certain in this court hearing tonight that they violated our laws, our native laws of the chiefs of, 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 of the flag to, to do this with our government in, in conflict of interest in, in their corporations uh, uh, doing this with, with our flag and our native land acts and their bodgy 1986 constitution that's got no legs, legal legs in it at all. Even the Treaty of Waitang is a fraud document. It's, it's got no watermark from British government printing office. They left it out and then sent it on to America with no watermark from the British printing, government printing office, Taka, uh, 1833 Taka uh, watermark is missing. So that makes it fraud. And it's got no end date on the Treaty of Waitangi. That's another fraud. That's a big fraud. See, no contract has to have an end date on it. No end date. That's it. We, we have them up in this court tonight for all that too, on the Queen's side. And now Queen, King, King Charles has to bear all, the, all that fraud and corruption of the Treaty of Waitangi out of this flag, 1835, Declaration, and 1834. 13 chiefs, they suck all the living daylights out of that flag to make their treaty out of it. See, so there, more fraud. It just keeps going. Australia and New Zealand are stuck together, Kate Frost. This is all your people in Wellington, your Maori peers, doing this to us, the native people and the people of New Zealand who don't know what's going on. This is what's going on with them how they make money out of it. And now we are on page 142, Liu Tai Choi, lawyer. He certified all these documents that are put together because he wanted to cut in on the deal with uh, Hyundai and Daiwo in South Korea, where he comes from. So he's an international lawyer, um, um, contract lawyer. So that's why I went to him. And he did all the work for me for nothing all these years. And he, he said, I'll have the contract with the tidal turbines. So he could still be in on that yet if I go back to see him and ring him next week. But he said money up this time around. So, so it, it, it really is going to be the pound note at the end of the day that I, I can cash the pound note on Jacinda's head to make it stick to them that it's real now and then give this fellow a pound note for all his problems that have caused him all this time with not paying him. And Graham Elliott, the private investigator, didn't pay them anything because I had no money. And they just did it for me.
because it was a good deal. It had everything going with it. So they got the pound notes. They've, they've got the ANZ bank. They got the videos from what I did and, and, and all of that. So I'm going to read it. Certificate of Authenticity documents to all to whom these press rep represent shall come New Tai Choi of Auckland in New Zealand, notary public, duly authorized, admitted and sworn and practicing within New Zealand, do hereby certify on 29th of August 2013, John Hawani Wanoa, a resident of Auckland, attended on me and sufficiently identified himself to me. He produced to me the following document. Application for default lien data, sale of ship and other property and business. I verify that the above named document is an original document and that the signatures thereunder subscribed were subscribed in my presence. So I took Manahi Mohini, I took people there, chiefs there in front of him to sign the documents and certify that these documents are true and correct. I have affixed my seal to such document and to the copies thereof, copies of them, there's more copies, and have initial the same for the purpose of authenticating them. In testimony whereof I have here unto subscribed my, my name and affix my seal of office at Auckland aforesaid this 20th day of August 2013 in faith and testimony, Notary Public Auckland, New Zealand. You type choice. All documents are my crown, share, trademark, brand name, patent, copyright, protected as Hawani Kahaki, copyright. Wanoa Lien Indictments S, S Warrants. Okay, so that's that's some verification that things that I say are true. And he certified it, so he should get something out of this lot for doing that job <clears throat> without pay yet. He get paid. He, he get paid one shot. So here we go past here, the authority uh, over the Pope with the Maui and the four corners of the earth. And we're at six o'clock at the East Cape on our land rock there at Tipito and midday on East Island at Tipito, the birth of the world and mid, 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 um, what's this other one? Tahiti and, and, and Ghana, Africa is 6 p.m. So you have a look at your, your clock on, on your, your, your mobile phone and sync those four places together and they'll be spot on. There's no other um, a way of describing what a Moai title is to the whole planet and, 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 and um, other than something perfected title. It's a perfected God's title of truth there to all these documents and everything I do from Tahiti and the Tikanga law where it comes from in Raiatea, Tapu Tapu Aotea Marae, where my family comes from. So there, that's me in God's law that I'm expressing on top of the, the, the King Charles no God law. He got, he got no God good enough and, and to, to be dishonest against honesty wins out. So there's King William's memorial in, in Devonport in, in Plymouth, in, in um, England, um, where I'm supposed to go to uh, William Yard, William Yard, and set up an office there. I was going to go there and claim his, his title there and join us up. We'll still be going there uh, if, if I get to going back to England if, 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 and go there and, and link that biggest Navy at the time to us here at Devonport here, from Devonport there to Devonport here and Plymouth. So there, we, 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 we've still got to do that. And here we've got the forms that went to uh, the High Court of Admiralty in the Rolls Building in Fetter Lane in London, 
but I didn't have the pictures and everything all over it. I just sent the real copy and then made a copy for ourselves with our seals and everything on it. I've sent it with the seal on it, but not all the other pictures and stuff I got stuck to it. Um, but that's how that one went anyway. With you, Tai Choi, I've just dropped this thing in there, his seal on page 141. I just put a bit of his seal there for the documents that he went over at the same time. Uh, so there we can roll on. We can we can squeam through all these pages now. We keep tearing on through the Andy. We'll try and skip a lot of this. We can skip a lot of it because that's just more. Oh, we get to page 157 is King William's gold coins. So we're using his gold coins as currency against the missing gold right there. That's our authority to use the gold coin in the bullion vault. Let me use their their company as a seal on the website. <clears throat> so I still got an account with bullion vault for the gold that we, we get back and stick in, in bullion vault in London. <clears throat> we, we recover and get the military to go after the gold and stick it over there. Um, so we carry on going. There's Mohi Monaco on page 158 with the memorial of King of, of Carfrey the Giant. And it's just got a pla a, 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 a stone there. There used to be a grave site with a with a fence, steel fence around it on one tree hill with a one tree. And so so it's Nati Fatua or the Crown took the plaque off and hid it away and then used a false kafadu. But I made another kafadu plaque and stuck it on it just for the memorial to, to claim to the real kafadu. Of, of Auckland title and Cook Street. So there, I sent all this to the government and said, we have the real Kafaru, but they still wouldn't listen. They just wouldn't listen. They just carried on going, ignorant people get the pound note on their head for getting it wrong. Here's the right man here that's got the title, the Moriori title to this whole country. Right there, that man there, Freemason 50 years, sitting right there, standing right there and claiming his title Page, 100, page 158. So, so there, that's the legacy. I carry his legacy. The Manukau family don't know any of this because he didn't tell any of them. He was sworn to secrecy of the Freemasons to say nothing at all. So here's a birth certificate. One of the birth certificates of Otai uh, Manukau on page 159, which just clearly says 130, 1830. 1834 on the birth certificate, and they still wouldn't take that on the affidavit of a birth certificate, the, the government of New Zealand. See, so so there, they, they've got a lot of answer, a lot to answer for, and we got another birth certificate here, Otai Manukau, male, Te Kuru refer for Manukau, um, um, on page 160. So there's two birth certificates there just stating the year of, of him saying, I was here, I was here, and I didn't see you, any of you people around. So here on page 100 and, 161 are all the signatures of the people who came up from Nelson, the real kafarus, that we had a, a, a big hui and a ropu in Manirewa because King Tehetja kicked us off the marae the new one at the airport, when when Ma, Mohi Manaka, he asked me if he can come to the hui, and Mohi said no. When I said to King Tohecha's crew, you can't come to the hui because that's his marae. He's got a, a special room in it for him. And and so he said, no, you can't come in here. So that's something I got against the Maori turning us down from having a hui in that marae for the kafirus, the real kafirus. You see, so so that's something I got against a bone to pick with Tainui and their king turning up an original native owner before he got here, and his whakapapa is is somewhere else in Tonga, not here. So so they got I know all the history of them. I, I know everything from the Manukau chief, and so this is all the people and a couple of them from Kaipara Harbour where with those other kafirus are under Hugh, Hugh Kafiru, the professor, that the government took his history, his 
his, uh, his um, contemporary history against the traditional history of Manukau. And that's, that's against them when we uncover all this in this court tonight for the British to have a look at the real story when we send this lot over to them and tell them, here's what's wrong with this country that's got it all wrong under your watch of your queens gone and done this and altered the whole history with just changing things around. The whakapapa, they changed the whole whakapapa, a whole lot to make all, all the other whakapapas go wrong too. You saw, I know, I know everything. I know everything about what they did. It's taken years to, to, to know all this stuff and to fix it up. The mechanic, that's my trade, mechanic, a grade mechanic fix up the problem better than, than anything else where there's a problem to fix. So we can keep going, roll past all of this. You can see some signatures going past. We're on page 170 now. We're getting somewhere close. Um, so we've got the Pope there signing his motu propria. And this is when I put the motu propria on Cook Street right here in that 2017 or 18 when we when we um, when we um, went to Cook Street, um, and um, and so that that he, that photo of him is is proof that that we are we're going to use again on Cook Street. We're going to use again. So I put the the dragon here right over the the marshal's seal stamp, and 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 put put that in its place and change the document to today. Of, of, of the gold dragon over the red dragon of, of all the monarchs in England where this gold has come out of those kings, not the queen. So there, the Pope is going to change the whole world on the 30th of September. And uh, you'll, you'll see the money change, but not our money. I'm saying tonight to the Pope, this is for you, Pope. We've got our own money and king's money, gold coins, and the King's um, Bank of England Act, 1689, Bank of England Act, 1694, and, and the pound note itself um, um, for New Zealand, um, 1680, 1687, I think it was, King Tafia pound note. So we've got those real instruments as our money, and you're not gonna touch our money and our legacy to Westminster um, because you've gone in Westminster and put your law that's got nothing to do with admiralty of making mortgages and lands to make your wealth out of it. And, and King and, and, and St. Patrick uh, is, 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 is buried in Ireland, not, not Rome where he was born. So you can't claim his memorial is born is, is, is when he's dead in Ireland, that's where we're taking the eight point star of that flag and the municipalities act of the star we have on the sheriff's badge to collect our rent off the land. That's what it means. Money, trade, banks, everything tied up in that eight point star with the crown on top and his horse, King William IV, on his horse on dry land. It's a dry land sheriff. Any other sheriff is in the sea. You see, any other sheriff is in the sea, except this one with the eight point star and his horse on dry land. And his ships in the background. If you have a good look at the picture, his horse is on, and the ships are in the background on that seal. That's the that's emperor's seal. That's a great seal of Britain. And King William III has got the other great seal of Britain, commercial contracts. Finish. End of story. No, no argument, don't argue, because that's the way it is. So these are all the comments made to the Pope, and you can read them if you like, but we're gonna skip past them. So I put them there for a reason of their response to the Pope's law that we're using. So we'll go past, um, we're going past page 193 that the Pope I put again for these, other documents of most appropriate. Uh, and then the pound notes on uh, page 995, Jamie Patrick, 
she did a lot of work with me and designed these pound notes with me. And her name, Patrick, comes from Ireland with that eight-point star, Patrick, it's her name. So there, she's got some um, history with the stewards of the, um, of the, um, um, of those, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, the policemen in, in, in London, the, the, what do you call it? Scotland Yard, Scotland Yard, the Stewart family. She's in the Stewart family and, and the Patrick family of Ireland and the Stewart family from Scotland. So, so there, that's why she's on these documents, but she's got a young family to look after and she's committed until such a time as we got going, she'll have a job back because she knows quite a bit of learning from me. She stayed with me in Auckland to go to the courts. She went to the courts with me and Desmond Wano went to the courts too. Um, so they've, they've got a handle in everything, um, that, but it got slowed down and stopped. There's all my handwriting of things that happened on Cook Street to the police. I'm writing to the police here and explaining everything because I ran out of time to type. There was a lot of typing going on. Uh, so we're on page 218. Well, we're getting close, Andy. We, 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 we're getting close. The Bar Association licenses are extinguished. There we are. That's the Pope. The Bar Association is extinguished. That's what I'm using in the court. Again, they can't use the Bar Association rules against us because we're going to use them against them and use the motu propria on them, the court and the judge and the prime minister and the governor general and all of them are not immune from prosecution in this real court. Right? I'm saying it's a real court. And we can do what we like in this court because it's native to the native people, not in the Maori and, the, the, and, and, and King Charles um, law system. That's nothing to do with us. I'm saying that quite clear. So here's multi and all the counts I've split out into a British system of counts, split these letter up so that we can pluck each one and make a, a, a law for it. So I've, I've got some marked out count 63 for the purposes of Vatican criminal law. The following persons are deemed public officials, former private officials, that people who have retired and run away from the government, we go after them because they're still liable, public and private officials, former, former private, that have gone, we chase after them, exempt from law, are now within the law dictates, and are now within the law dictates and held liable, the word liable, aka public servants. So they're all liable, the whole damn lot of them. So I made a point of putting that there, and some of the other red bits that are here are saying the same thing. So I won't say anything because we already said it before. Um, we're going to go past all this. <clears throat> some more about Queen Elizabeth and some more to sign, some, some more things to sign here on page 229, um, March the 7th, 2013. And today, Saturday, the 10th of September, 2022, add names any time after this date for everything that we're saying in this court tonight. They can sign anywhere in these documents <coughs> to lay claim or certify them as being correct. So we can always, I got a back page that's blank to put any signatures on in the book of anybody. So I've left one page with nothing on it. It, it just came up as nothing on it. I couldn't remove it. So I just left it there. That's why there's a blank page at the end. It's for spare for writing signatures on. But it's got no page number on it. That's the only thing wrong with it. But it's bound with it. Um, so we've got, um, we've got, uh, we're on page um, 230. We've got um, Manahi Mohini writing a letter commending me 
in what I'm doing and certifying as a justice of the peace. You must have that with a magistrate court. I'm a magistrate court, captain on a ship, um, and acting as a surrogate king and writing these documents up in the magistrate court. And we've got um, Manahi, Mohini, Hiruwini, Karaka, Bandi, Waitai, um, as chiefs at the time that uh, signed these documents um, in the native court at Waitangi. Um, so we can carry on going through past there. Um, I'm on page, I'm on page 232. <clears throat> I'll, I'll read this a little bit in red. Please note that John never had, this is Ma, Manahi Mohini, the JP, Justice of Peace, writing this letter um, to um, um, Yu Tai Choi, the lawyer, um, to um, get him to, to do the case. Please note that John never had his hearing in Auckland as the court dismissed the case as insufficient evidence. Now, John has more evidence that is a default case as it was before with the owners and the previous owners of that land. John maintains in his bank brokering and real estate land title investigation for our ancestors, his professional assessment as our Moriori Manukau Native Land Commissioner is undisputed as he sums it up as a bad title by those who created it to defraud the public of New Zealand and the paramount chiefs we represent with the signed mandate. So they gave me, the chiefs gave me a mandate to go to Westminster right there, right right in this letter as, as one of the chiefs that wrote to me, wrote to the lawyer to put it through that we have valid, legal, legitimate instruments. John has deed titles to Hori Takuri, commercial land title transfer as his evidence linking Hori Takuri, chief to Refere for Manukau, commercial landowner of Auckland. He holds title to as the Moriori Manukau Trust executor. The word executor, I can attest to citing the titles to the court hearings we had already in Hokianga and in Epsom, Auckland. So he went to all the hearings I had to linked to lock this title to Cook Street good and proper up so that there's nothing that can get in the way of the contract. So there, that's something of Manahi. I've got his photo down here further to uh, put him uh, there uh, beside his, his document to the lawyer. So roll down past all this in red is a lot of information. There's Moira Hoffman Russell on page 237, as Moira gave me her house, her, her luxury house in Rotorua on the lakefront uh, to stay there for as long as I want because she believed in what I'm saying. And that's where the name Russell comes from up at Kororareka is from the Russell family that she's in and was living in uh, Hokianga where the uh, British ships came in and taking all the big curry logs to England. And so her family was tied up with all the, um, um, all the um, land transactions and everything. So there, that's her in her place in these legal documents to Britain. The connection to Britain is her. And Gregory Cook, the Cook name, and her Russell name on Russell, Kororareka, and that flag, we're going to go there and talk to the local people with this book and tell them, here's your history to everything that we're saying when you first came here to get the land. That's what they came here. The British people came here to get the land and the resources as they were doing business in Britain at the time. They just came here and to do the same thing. So there, we're just tying ourselves to the business of what they came here for. So there's uh, Manahi Mohini uh, on page 238 with his letter um, and ending his letter. Uh, John Wanoa is acting as a King Saragat, King Ernest Augustus IV of Hanover, 
or supposed to be the fifth of Hanover. Thank you. So that's from him, Manahi Parapara Mohini, Justice of the Peace, Paramount Chief in the picture. So I just added the word chief in the picture or in the picture. He put Paramount Chief. So he's a Paramount Chief. So there, that just certifies, locks up these documents solid in the magistrate court with that man. Uh, upon completion of money's owing, or he's just saying money owing uh, to you are to be paid in full, just in the den. I'm just telling you, this justice of the peace in this court tonight is saying here, upon completion of your services, all money owing to you are to be paid in full. So you need to pay this money in full. All you people with those photos that are put on tonight in this court hearing, this man here in this court is saying you must pay the bill for all your criminal activity and criminal organization. <clears throat> um, as appointment is required with yourself to discuss the financial arrangements regarding past. That's with the lawyer. Services rendered by John Wano in regard to property of 77 Cook Street, Auckland City. He's talking about Auckland Cook Street. Um, this letter is in support of Graham Aylett of Aylett Investigation Limited to seize the property at 77 Cook Street, Auckland and business assets as previously claimed with the land as a transaction matter only. John is a privy an executor while he was has appointed me as an administrator with him administrator and is the creator of the Moriori Manukau Trust and the Moai King William IV Trust. Two trusts under the British law systems, historically a commercial contract that no one else has signatory to the business trade and investment wealth inheritance created by the King's Crown Corporation flag receipt John Wano holds as the head trustee under the Maui Crown King William IV Trust and Moriori Manukau Trust for and on behalf of Tony Manukau, that's Mohi Manukau's brother, and President of the Confederation of Chiefs of Tribes of Aotearoa New Zealand, Mohi Temati Manukau, and his Confederation member Hare Ututonga of Te Te Marae Land Rocks, John Holtz, these three men's native land titles in private contracts in Aworo Native Magistrate Court in Helensville, Kaipara. John opened the same as the other Native Magistrate Courts he opened in Okiata Navy Flag Mass on Mikey Hill above Russell Bay Violence, Waitangi Marae Native Magistrate Court, Waimana Marae Native Magistrate Court. Toi Kairako Nukutere Marae, Native Magistrate Court, Rangi Tokia, that's the East Cape where I come from. Te Hiku Ote Ika Marae, Native Magistrate Court at Te Hapua, that's way up north, um, Spirits Bay. Te Unga Waka Marae in Epsom, Auckland, that's below One Tree Hill. And Te Horo Marae in Port Awanui, Ruatoria, East Coast, that's where Kate Baker comes from, Ruatoria. So there. All these native court in Marais are back behind these online Marai based court hearings that we have on Zoom. So it's tied to those real live court hearings on Marais as courts. All Marais are courts, native courts, and they're not using the native court laws. John maintains his commitment to Moe Manukau Scottish rules part of the legal document instruments processing of these land titles, creator of these land titles and birth certificate bond security of investment instruments for banking and commercial title business, Helensville native land title transfer of bank creditors, instrument account settlement of debt account owed between John one our first party judgment creditor and second party defaulted contract judgment data in a two-party private contract where New Zealand police, police became a third party and lost against, well, it's him, um, the first party, this time 
anyone who challenges this YouTube video is a third party data outright. So I instruct you on John Wanamon's behalf to write a letter of support authorizing Graham Ehrlich of Ehrlich Investigations Limited to proceed with the seizure of 77 Cook Street, knowing that John Wanamon has other commitments to these lands and other third parties linked to what he states publicly as major blue collar fraud scam operation. He assumes the British military is watching who makes the wrong move and I feel that John has a backup plan in case he gets let down by too many people know that the Crown has a big problem now. Only one. So, King. so there, that's a letter from Mana, Manahi Mohini to Utah Choi lawyers in 11A, 17 Albert Street, Auckland. I've been there enough times to see him. <clears throat> so there, that's an affidavit of statement from me, just there, I won't read it. I think I've done enough reading. And that's my statement of um, declaration. The pound note with a trillion pounds on it, there. And the goal, um, these are the two instruments we are using to claw back all the wealth that's been stolen illegally, belonging to the sovereign people and nations of the world not just New Zealand. It's just a starting point to go and use in Canada uh, with um, uh, Harvey, Harvey, um, Harvey um, Kinimato um, and his tribal elders. They have a problem uh, getting them together. That was a, a, bit of, a bit of let down from the last big meeting in a circle he had, I've never got any feedback of how it went from Harvey. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I haven't heard much back from him, but we just continue on. We, we've got a big job to do and we must keep going. Criminal law, this here, this bit on criminal law, um, mismanagement of um, business, public officer commits a misdemeanor. I won't, I won't read it, but that's for you to read um, what, what is criminal law and pr prerogative rights, writs that we're using in this court tonight. I put it there just explaining. I won't read it. I, I think I've, I've read enough um, so far. But all that read bits is this pound note, trillion pound note on page 244 that relates the writ is that pound note sitting right there on page 244 at the bottom, Andy, those writs of that instrument that we drop on these people's head, their photos tonight in this court hearing as enforced into law straight away. We can cash them out with this pound note from tonight and evermore after that as, as um, extend uh, the flag is extant forevermore. That means you can't take it down or change it. You can't change it. It's fixed institute law in Westminster. And so we, we're using that connection as our authority over King Charles and his problem government and parliament and problem Pope Francis with all all these allegations and, and criminal activities against him. We're putting this up here against Pope Francis tonight, this pound note instrument here on his head. And it's a big figure of 970 million trillion trillion pound note on his head tonight as being the upper limit of where we can go anywhere between. So there, Pope, that one's for you. This one's for you too, Prince uh, King Charles. This pound note here is a legal, legitimate instrument of Patterson's bank and Patterson's pound note, original patent, that we are using his patent with our own authority to King William III, the creator of the laws and acts of the pound note and the Bank Act, Bank of England Act, that he put together and that's our Dutch authority, Zeeland, New Zealand, Dutch. That's where that name comes from. So there, I want to lock this in 
so that um, the sheriffs and Gregory Cook knows what I'm talking about is financial instruments, land title survey instruments, memorial instruments, and also live people instruments that sign these documents as being the, the owner, the land owner, landlord of native lands with these instruments, the names that I put in these documents are handpicked by me as the court's authority of law making jurisdiction and constitution tonight. Okay, so this one's for you, uh, Pope Francis. All your new money, control money, crypto is non-existent in this court and this money system of gold coins and gold um, um, digital currency. Or if we want, I don't want to go crypto. I just don't like it because it's hiding fraud. All the crypto is hiding something and people lose. You don't lose anything in this court. In that court, you lose everything and people gain. The people who know how to play the game win and all the people who don't know how to play the game lose. So we're not into losing anything from this court. So there, just to make it quite plain and clear tonight that all your laws that you bring to New Zealand is void and overrun by this court and the king's superior law and emperor's law put on your head tonight. So there, we're going to go um, affidavit of declaration of allodial and ownership property 246 somewhere there and then we've got a signature I've got there one signature is enough for the whole thing um, I use electronic signatures and when they press the button to accept the, like what um, Jacinda Dern did accepted my emails it it it, it put in her in a contract with me. And even the registered letter I sent her with the documents in, in the envelope and registered and receipted with a, a, a number, um, she got it. And so she's been served the notice on her head. So there, we're, we're just rolling through page 215. There, I'm just about there. There are names of who is in the full transactions. Over here, we've got a few names in the transactions on page 251 or from 250 all around here. All those people that have got their names in here gets a trillion pounds on their head. All of them, even the ones who have retired from government or from crown agent position, they get a trillion pounds on the end, are going after the whole lot of them for interfering and tempering and disrupting my job as a debt collector and property um, um, seizure um, um, warrant um, lawmaking authority. So there, um, we'll, we'll skip through that. Um, Aaron Pasco, Ricard Bell. Just about there, Andy. We've got a note here on page 254. I made one at the time of the value of the property, but we'll go and skip right over that because that's all changed now. That was a power note I made especially for Cool Street at the time. <coughs> so <coughs> we've got an instrument here on page 255 uh, there with um, um, King Ernest Augustus the fifth uh, region um, uh, as, as our king. There, that's the last page of, of, of the contract that um, uh, is those two landowners on the, on the block of land. And we're still going under our Dutch kings and this uh, coat of arms here of, of King Ernest Augustus the fifth. He's still alive. He, I think he's about 67 now might be 68 or 70, and living in London, very much alive. But I don't know 
what he's going to do about it because everything he's been doing has gone to Spain and the Spanish are involved with the trust, um, the king and queen of Spain and all the gold in Philippines that belongs to our trust. But um, um, Duterte, President Duterte, won't let Trump go and Trump tried to go and get the gold and Duterte put an a, a, a emergency a martial law on him if he stepped in the country to, to try and claim it. So it belongs to us. So one day soon, I'll just write the power note out to that gold in Philippines as our trust um, entity and uh, inheritance, legal inheritance for all the people in the world where the business and all its tentacles from Queen Victoria into the United Nations has spread its tentacles of our trust all the way through the world. That is our authority from this court tonight. We are claiming back for the sovereign people of the whole world tonight on the last page. And there, Andy, ends the court hearing tonight. And we have found them guilty. Those people have put their photos there. In addition to everybody else that we have put in this court with their photos there, are complicit in one fraud equals all fraud of the same tar and brush. So there, the court is ended now, and we can rest and have a, a talk amongst ourselves. Okay, I shall end the court now. So the time now is uh, 8.54 New Zealand time. Is that correct? Yeah, 8.54 New Zealand time, PM. So it's 11.50 yeah, AM in uh, Greece, and it's Saturday the 10th of September 2022. So I'll end recording now.